Pilot Sports. That roadblock that Duke ran into in Atlanta was Georgia Tech, as the Jackets stunned the nation's top-ranked team one month ago to the day. An intensely fought ACC battle that saw Duke's school record 23-game winning streak end, thanks to Georgia Tech's best 40-minute effort of the year. Tonight, the rematch in Cameron. Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports present the best in college basketball, the Atlantic Coast Conference. Tonight's game is brought to you by Bud Dry, the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, Pepsi, Nations Bank, Lowe's, Food Lion, U.S. Air, and by Buick. Cameron Indoor Stadium, as usual, filled to the rafters and very noisy as the number three Duke Blue Devils gets set to take on the men from Atlanta, the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Rathbun. Welcome to ACC Basketball from Durham, North Carolina. Yes, it was on January 10th in game one between these two teams that headlines were made from coast to coast. Georgia Tech was able to knock off then number one Duke, and they got a great effort from Drew Barry. He scored eight of his 11 points in the second half, had four steals in the ballgame, and Georgia Tech also got great play inside as James Forrest and Malcolm Mackey combined for 33 points and 16 rebounds. Cherokee Parks was not that big a factor in game one, only six points and five rebounds as Duke went down to defeat. Despite a career-high 29 points from this man, Grant Hill, it was not enough as Georgia Tech held on for the one-point victory. Billy Packer joins me tonight, Bill, and a lot has happened to these two basketball teams since that date in Atlanta, and particularly to Georgia Tech. After the Duke win, they fell three straight times, including the stunner against College of Charleston, and last weekend beat Maryland 93-79 to end a two-game losing streak, so it's been tough to figure out the Jackets. It really has, and not only the outcome of the games, Bob, but the way that they've been played. When you take a look at some of those losses, they actually got blown out in some games when you thought that Georgia Tech was on the in a position to be a top 10 ranked team. Now the stars of these two teams and their performances well documented over the years and particularly this ACC season but it may be some of the supporting cast that steps up and we got a taste of what Drew Barry could do in that game against Duke in Atlanta. He was the MVP of that game without doubt coming off the bench and doing a superlative job. There you see his stats with 11 points. He also was great from an assist standpoint. He was able to go ahead and get five assists in that game. Four huge steals. Played a great game off the bench. Marty Clark went five for five from the floor in that game in Atlanta. And he's another guy, Billy, that can step up his game to help Duke here in the next few weeks. Well, I think it's really crucial if Duke is going to make a stretch drive here in the ACC and then on into the NCAA tournament. Marty Clark has got to not only step in as a sixth man, but also when asked to start, has to do well. We'll check the starting lineups, and there's a change for the Blue Devils after this word from our good friends at Bud Drive. Stadium, the second oldest arena in college basketball. Only Allen Fieldhouse in Kansas is older as the Dukies get set to take on Georgia Tech. Let's take a look at the Lowe's starting lineups tonight for Georgia Tech. Martise Moore joins James Forrest and Malcolm Mackey up front. Travis Best and Drew Barry in the backcourt. The head coach of the Yellow Jackets is Bobby Crummins. 12 and 16, lifetime against the Blue Devils. We mentioned the Duke starting lineup, and there is a change as Cherokee Parks has been taken out of the starting lineup tonight and been Put on the bench, Eric Meek will start. The 6'10 sophomore from Escondido, California, joins Lang, the two hills, and Hurley. And you see Mike Krzyzewski and uh, maybe Billy a wake-up call for the young man from California. Well, Sharon Wright had a great game, and we see right here 21 points, 15 rebounds in that game Monday night, uh, which Duke really struggled. So I guess Cherokee Parks will not only learn a lesson from that, but uh, we'll see how he comes off that bench tonight. Indeed. It's the Blue Devils and Georgia Tech from Camden. We'll have the opening tip-off in just a moment. Energy at Cameron Indoor Stadium as Duke gets set to take on Georgia Tech. Duke ranked number three this week, one of four ACC teams in the top ten. North Carolina number six, winning last night to take a half a game lead in the league. Wake number nine, Florida State number ten. You see the all-time series record between these two clubs, and Duke has won 16 out of 19 
against the Jackets here in Durham. And there is Eric Meek, who gets the start at center today. He's averaging just about three rebounds and four points per game. Cherokee Parks coming off the bench. Dick Paparo tosses it high. Georgia Tech wins the opening tip. Great point guard matchup with Travis Best, who's on a roll. Bobby Hurley, who's been that way for four years. Drew Perry. And Martise Moore, Grant Hill's on him. Forrest. Off the window. Opens the scoring. Strong move for the 6'8 sophomore. Wait, you know, there's a case where Lang knows he's a left-hander. And obviously, Forrest brought that ball back right with his left hand. Lang should have been prepared for that in his hand back. 2-3 zone starts it for Georgia Tech. And Lang misses, but Grant Hill skies through to score. Down the game. No block out on the 2-3 zone. Left an open lane for Grant. There's a tough matchup right here for me because Mackey's a little quicker. Barry open for a moment, but Thomas Hill gets back. Martise Moore is shut off. He came off the bench in the first game against Duke. Forrest across and Moore puts it in. There's a young man with great potential at that wing spot for Georgia Tech. Six foot eight. Smooth basketball player and is really going to be a good one in the league. There's that 2 3 zone again. Even without Ivano Newbill in the game in the starting lineup, Georgia Tech's still pretty big back there. And this best gets it out for Georgia Tech. Drew Barry stops and backs and hits. Drew Barry coming off a fine week last week as he earned starting course against Clemson in Maryland. Six to two yellow jack. His stats lately from an assist standpoint have been amazing. You know, he, mm -hmm. he, as good as Travis Best is, even with a much less minutes, Barry is right up there with it. Thomas Hill rainbows one in, the two-point Georgia Tech lead. So far, kind of surprising, Bob, the fact that the defense have had to really shut anybody down. Both teams getting good shots early on. Good double team by Thomas Hill. Nice Duke. job by Duke. And Duke is running. Here's Hurley. Thomas Hill. Ties again. That was a great play by Bobby Hurley, although not spectacular. The little extra stop that he put on it created the passing lane so that Hill could come right on through. Another good overplay by Thomas Hill. Barry's really got to move with Thomas Hill on him. He's standing still quite a bit. Hill's just beating him to the spots at this point. Moore trying to get it inside. Oh, some good deep by line and Grant Hill and up ahead to Thomas Hill. Mackey fell asleep. He realized Hill was ahead of him. Instead of busting to catch up, he just kind of glided down the floor. A little lack of hustle on his part. Spins it in. Right-handed that time. He put that one in my face. I said he's going to come back with the left. He showed he can do it both ways. Forrest is averaging 20 game bills, second best in the ACC. Well, early on, he was the number one scorer in the Atlantic Coast Conference. He stayed one or two throughout the entire year. Outstanding player. Nate can't handle it, but does the next best thing and tips it to a teammate. I think Duke's going to have to get somebody on the foul line against this particular defense. Rebound, more plays to Barry. Good hit ahead. Great play. Mackey had it blocked by me. That's the first Georgia Tech miss. They're now four or five. And it's a charge on Best as he threw the forearm to get Hurley out of the way. Well, you know, we talked about uh, Tech shooting well here at the start. They did that down in Atlanta as well. The only team this year to shoot over 50% against Duke on the season. That's right. That start was 12-0. Tonight it is eight apiece. Time out on the floor. We're going to see excellent hit ahead by Georgia Tech, but Eric Meek really hustling on the play. Not much Mackey could do. He had to catch the ball first. Didn't really have an opportunity to stop and go for the dunk, but that was just good hustle. Now here we see just the opposite of the case. There was a case where Mackey did not hustle to get in the spot. Allowed Duke to throw ahead for the easy layup. 
And the shooting so far. And for Duke, Coach K has placed Parks in the game. And Cherokee's got the offensive stick back. Georgia Tech tried to trap out of their zone a little bit. Again, a, a situation where it's very difficult to get block out assignments. Parks took advantage. Brian Hill, the ball game for the Yellow Jackets. Number 11, and like it here. Slides through the lane and it blocked by Thomas Hill. He really had to commit so early that it was pretty easy to block that shot. And Georgia Tech coming the other way. Quickly ahead to Barry underneath Perfect. the forest. What a nice feed and a nice control job by Forrest. Smart play by both guys. Barry realizing he had no passing angle for the direct pass. So Forrest uh, kind of read his mind a little bit and went up in the air. Smart play. Tied at 10. March at six points and five boards in the first matchup. Grant Hill. Again, Duke really getting good opportunities to put back the ball against that zone. Drew Barry will put it in. You saw the fans are booing, and the fact thought that Mackey marched <laughs> Bobby Hurley right into the basket and put him on the seat of his pants, but it was a good, solid play. And a smart play by Barry to pull up and take the jump. Oh. Hurley misses the three. Brian Hill shields parts away from the ball, and it's out of bounds. Was Bobby Hurley used to seeing uh, Mackey uh, put the put him on the floor? That was uh, one of the plays of the year. You see, Mackey's just running. I mean, that's not a foul. Hurley wasn't set to draw the charge. Not a lot of contact. And no advantage game. 12 10 Georgia Tech. Hurley will long remember that pick in Atlanta that Mackey set. You saw stars after that play. Yeah, it was miraculous that he was able to play out the rest of the game. Thomas Hill spotted for the hand check. His first foul. Well, Brian Hill's a guy that Bobby Hurley loves coming. I mean, that Bobby Crimmins loves coming off the bench. Because he can explode. He can play multiple positions. He's got a lot of experience in the league. And has had a number of double-figure games this year. As a score. Forrest. Grand Hill averaging seven rebounds a game ahead to Marty Clark. Thomas Hill for three. Good solid screen by Grand Hill. Two players used to play with each other, recognized the play, took advantage of it. Good night for Thomas so far. Nine points out of Duke's 13. Best follows. Travis, who leads the league in three-point shooting, going to get done inside. Foul on Mackey. It's about a 30-foot pass right down the center. It shows the confidence that Bobby Hurley has in Grand Hill's ability to go in the air, make the catch, and then finish off inside. 14-13, Georgia Tech. He talked about Travis Best. He hasn't had one yet tonight. He hasn't even attempted one, but he's got 29 straight games making a three. Grand Hill left it short. Parks kept it alive, but Mackey controls. He four ties and four leads. Oh, he went right by Bobby Hurley. And a foul on Grant Hill. Now, one of the things, uh, Bob, you're going to see against that particular defense that Georgia Tech's playing, there are going to be a lot of rebounds that are going to come right around that foul line area. So far, Duke has been waiting way back outside with Hurley or whoever's the other off guard and not in a position to get those long rebounds. I think there's some opportunities to go in there and pick off some easy shots. Travis Best is the only guard in the ACC in the top 10 in field goal percentage, 53%. From the floor so far this year, a 68% foul shooter. It's hard to believe the guy can make 51% of his threes and only 68% <laughs> when he's being guarded and only 68% of 15-foot shots when he's not guarded. It's a both this time. Georgia Tech leads by three. And they're staying at 2-3. Now they're going to match up a little bit out of it. You see they're matching up in that zone. Clark drives around Forrest. Nice. Inside Grant Hill. He'll shoot two. 
They went to the weak side quickly yeah. attack. Excellent ball movement that time with a skip pass by Duke University, and that really give a matchup zone a lot of trouble. There you see Parks going, skipping all the way across the court, the touch pass to Grand Hill. Just no way to get over there for, for James Forrest. Nice first foul. Number four, Kenny Blakeney has come in as Thomas Hill takes a seat. Of course, in the last game, Grant was 13 to 14 from the line, had his career high with 29 against Georgia Tech. First one. Bangs out. Duke leading the ACC in free throw percentage at 73% and had been over 80% in each of their last five games coming into this one. A soft rim, isn't it? I guess so. Three points for Grant, a two-point Georgia Tech win. Contain best, not trying to steal from him. And that's tough to do as well as Travis can maneuver that ball with a dribble. Offense. And it's on Mackey. As he was banging into parks, trying to make some room. That's the second foul on Bobby Kremen's center. An easy call right here. Malcolm moves in to get position, unnecessarily throws the elbow, puts a real jolt on Cherokee Park's neck. And then wonders why he gets the foul. That's his second. That kind of hurts uh, Bobby Crimmins' club to have him out of there so quickly. Now Nugo has to do the job. And he has not been getting much production out of Nugo of late. Tech sticking with that zone. 16-14, Yellow Jack. But you're right, Bill. That was a great reception. Excellent hands. When you see the ball swung across the court like that, the man that makes the catch either has to be prepared and know before he makes the catch that he's got the wide open shot or should get ready for the immediate touch pass because if somebody's on him, that means somebody's going to be open down and low in a hurry. Best hasn't had room to breathe. Early fouls in this time. See if Shusheski tries to work the official a little bit on that. That's the second hand check foul called against Duke. Time out on the yep. floor. You can see it. <laughs> Mike's pleading his case. Now this from our good friends at Bud Drop. Talk about what it takes, at least a part of what it takes to beat Duke. The five losses that we're referring to have come after the first national championship, all five in the ACC. And then what Georgia Tech did in Atlanta in game one, they won by a point and shot so well. But, Billy, as you know, that's just a part of it. Tonight, they're shooting the ball well. But you know, as well as anybody, to win in this building, you've got to do it at the defensive end of the floor, too. It certainly is the case. Their zone has been effective so far against uh, Duke University. I think the main reason is Duke really hasn't employed anybody on the foul line yet. And Bobby Hurley has not really gotten into the game offensively. I'd expect him to open up here soon. First daylight of the night for Travis Best, and he buries him. 18-14, Yellow Jackets. Hurley got caught on a good screen. So Hurley has been kind of quiet, has not taken over the ball, has not tried to penetrate with the dribble. Looks like he's letting the game come completely to him. I think he needs to take over here a little more. I'm going to give Grand Hill that shot right at the three-point line area. Parks. Morris kicks it ahead. Grab his best. Over nice. to Drew Barry. And nice. he gets the bucket. Foul on Hurley, his second. And Barry gives Georgia Tech a six-point lead. What do you think Bobby Crimmins feels in a game when he says, now, which team is going to show up? I mean, what they have done so far as far as execution, as far as teamwork, as far as their concentration has been that of a top 10, 15 team. There are other nights when you wonder, who are these fellas? For Crimmins, that has to be with them every day in practice, plus these games, it must be like a nightmare. <laughs> It has been some frustrating times on the flats for Bobby Kremen, but everything going great for Georgia Tech so far, although Barry misses that foul shot. They lead by six, 10.55 to go in the first half. Georgia Tech's on an eight to one run. You see, I, I was mentioning about Hurley has to get into the game a little more offensively. With that foul, he's now on the bench. So who will take the offensive mantle? Clark will throw. Nice shot. And a foul. See, I, I thought 
that that's what Bobby Hurley could do. The, the zone is a standing 2-3. A lot of opportunity to put the ball on the floor and dribble right down through the lane. I mean, there's nobody putting pressure on the ball. Clark takes advantage of it. Now, maybe Hurley sitting on the bench can see that and start to react. James Forrest picking up his second foul and Marty Clark trying to polish off a three-point play. Outstanding foul shooter. 92% for the season. He's hit 10 in a row and 23 out of 24. Uh, Hush comes over the camera and crazies, and he's got it. Uh, Clark, you're really having a, a good year against Georgia Tech. He has not missed a shot yet, either from the floor or the field. That's out of bounds to Duke. The fifth turnover for the Yellow Jackets. Exception that one breakaway basket. Duke hasn't been able to get anything going in transition either. Always a key for the Blue Devils getting some easy buckets off their defense. You see, there's the matchup of the 2-3 zone. Thomas Hill's open if they can get the ball on the swing. There he is. Eric Meek. Shoot. One ready to shoot. Lang fumbles. Meek has it. Bangs it in. The six-point Yellow Jacket lead is down to one. And now this puts Grant Hill on Travis Best. Giving up quite a bit of quickness there. Tick down. You know, Billy, you were talking about which Georgia Tech team would show up. Go back to 1955 when Georgia Tech last beat a number one team. They beat Kentucky and in Lexington. The old Coliseum, and they said, "Ah, oh, you'll never beat him the next time around." They beat him in Atlanta, exactly. <laughs> one month later. Exactly. Broke the longest winning streak in the history of college basketball. Moore misses, but Newbill's there. Nice passing. And Moore tries it again. This one won't go. Newbill inside. He'll shoot. Oh no, it's a traveling violation. Yeah, I think you saw a nice piece of officiating in the fact that one ref covered for the other. One thought it was a foul, the other, yeah, exactly. Bobby Crimmins realizing it too, but it, it, nice for officials not to overrule each other. The walk gets the call. And Grant Hill out at the point, that takes away some of his ability to offensive rebound against this zone, but he can penetrate against it. There he goes. Kicks it out to Marty Clark. Boy, Bobby Crimmins is gonna see him in his dream. Duke by two on the Clark three-pointer. The best being very patient, but I think he ought to try to go by Grand Hill with the dribble some. Just test to see if he's quick enough to handle him. Moore open, nobody on him. They spot him, and Moore buries him. Martise Moore, the ACC Rookie of the Week. Smart play by Travis Best. He realized that Duke had had a mix-up on their defense and signaled to get that ball over to Moore. Down the lane goes Clark. Georgia Tech breaks it up. Grant Hill is back. Travis leaves it for Barry. Up and in. I don't know when I've seen Duke get caught in so many transition situations when they aren't retaliating on uh, any transitions of their own. Eight-minute mark of the first half, Georgia Tech by two. Particularly a team that's playing them in a very passive 2-3 matchup zone. Lang, and Mackey got a piece of that and pulls it out of the air. 24-22, Georgia Tech. That's his 40th block on the year. Very good timing. Fourth of the conference of block shots. Duke, Duke really playing an oddball defense of their own. See what Thomas Hill's doing out here? Off the hands of Mackey. Unusual defense with Thomas Hill playing his own. They're playing his own. Thomas is a rover. Timeout on the floor. Will return after this from Pepsi. 
State journeyed to Cole Fieldhouse to take out the Maryland Terrapins. That's the 130 game. And then at 4 p.m. here at Cameron, Coach K, the Devils take on the Red Hot Wake Forest Demon Deacons. That's at 4 p.m. And also at 4, the Virginia Cavaliers meet the Clemson Tigers at Clemson. Check your local listings for the game in your region. Well, Wake Forest, some kind of hot at Florida State tonight. Well, two huge tests for them this week at Florida State, and of course, over here against the Duke Blue Devils this weekend. So that will be the all-time litmus test for a team that's playing as well as anybody in the country right now. Here it's Georgia Tech by two. Early missing the three. Loose ball in the lane. Best goes diving. Saves it. No, he's out of bounds. Of course, Hurley coming off a, a, a game in which he hit four threes. And we're so accustomed to watching him just when Duke gets in a lethargic state or gets in a critical state in a basketball game, he'll come in and light it up with a three. There he almost did it again coming off the bench. But this Duke team right now is not playing well. They just are not into the flow of their normal game. I'm anxious to see the defense the next time down the floor because if it had anybody confused, it had me confused as to what in the world Thomas Hill was doing. Nice pass. Oh, Harks misses it, but gets a retrieve and dunks it. Let's see if they're just back to straight man to man now. Yes, they are with Hurley back in the game. Might have been what they were playing before, but they're just so confusing. They picked it up a notch here. Drew Barry. And Martise Moore. Shot clock at 13. Mackey going to work and spins it in. First bucket for the big fella from Chattanooga tonight. But in fairness to Parks, nobody came down to help out against him. And he really was backed all the way down under the basket. Thomas Hill in the lane. See what's happening right now. You notice how far away from the basket the Duke perimeter people are on those rebound attempts? And they're not even a factor. The Georgia Tech just surrounding the basket. It's one and done every time there's a perimeter shot. Barry. Nice lob. Found his man and Forrest made him pin. James with eight. Georgia Tech leads by four. <laughs> Parks lays it in. 28-26. Can't ask for a better pass. Bobby Hurley continues to move up that line. He's now 72 away from being the greatest assist man in the history of college basketball. Blocking foul on Cherokee. It's his first. Here's Chris Collins checking in. The freshman from Northbrook, Illinois. And going out is Antonio Lang. Now, if Grant Hill continues to play up at the point, that puts two excellent shooters on the wings in Collins and, and Bobby Hurley. And see if they try to go ahead and work against that 2 3 matchup with some perimeter shooting on the wings. Travis Best. With Hurley coming up on him now as he picks up his dribble. Number five. And the five-second violation gives it to two. That really was not best fault. Nobody broke to the ball, put him in a position where rather than making a bad pass, he probably was better off just hanging on to it. Good defense by Hurley. And here it is, Grant Hill at the top. Collins and Hurley on the wings. We've got really four good perimeter shooters out there now. Hurley penetrating. All day long. There all day long. First time tonight that Hurley tried to penetrate against the zone. Best tried to whip it inside to Mackey, but it's out of bounds. Duke will have it. 442 left of the first half. Hill and Newbill return for Bobby Browns. And it's going to be Moore and Mackey to go out. Cherokee Parks takes some tape off his fingers. I don't really think that that was the <laughs> true problem, but at least psychologically it may make him feel better. But Hurley did the right thing there. Put the ball on the floor and dribble through this zone. 
unusual to see Parks miss a couple of chippies. He's yep. a 67 percent shooter. Early long through. Reed Hill is there. Without the ball by Georgia Tech, rubbing off those solid screens inside. Their guards roll inside, come off the big man. Newfield lobs it out to Perry. Shot clock, not a problem. 15 seconds. Hurley is a problem. And now Best is trying to. Beautiful pass. Great feed, and Hale can't shoot it. Forrest can and scores. Great pass by Best. 30-26, Georgia Tech continues to lead by four, three and a half to go in the half. Myers wasn't ready. Going to go oh, right back into the hands of Grant Hill. You know, Duke looks like they just don't have their legs in this game. Here's Collins. We talked about being able to shoot on that wing. But you don't see a lot of real fire in their club tonight. At Notre Dame Saturday, at Clemson Monday. Well, they start playing two games a week now. So it's a team that should be rested going down the stretch. And Vano Newbill with the foul and the turnover. We'll give it to Duke when we come back. 2.51 left in the first half. We'll return after a word from our good friends at Budweiser. Great pass off the dribble right here by Travis Best. Looks one way right off the dribble, fires it on the inside. Good job by Hill, knowing he's going to get the shot block, gets it over to James Forrest, puts it in his second left-handed inside shot of the night. The point people tonight, Travis Best with six points. He's had three assists and three turnovers. Hurley, three assists, no turnovers. And no field goals. Bobby Hurley kind of, as I said early on, was looks like he was letting the game come to him. Now it looks like he's having one of those nights where the legs just aren't moving as rapidly as normal. He's going to have to put the ball on the floor and force himself to get into a better tempo. Duke can get the lead back with a bucket here. Hurley, there's the penetration. There it is. Kick out to Collins. Hill reaches high to get it. Off the new best there screen. Goes that three. 140, 184 straight games now that Georgia Tech has a, a three point basket. And for Travis Best, that continues his streak to 30 straight games with a three. Nine points tonight. Georgia Tech leads by four. The biggest Tech lead has been six. You see, they're still matching up. Barry trying to stay with Parks. Too small. Foul is going to be called on Brian Hill. And it will send Cherokee Parks to the line. Cherokee has not had a big night as far as scoring, but he's making himself available down in the inside and Duke getting him the ball. He could have a big night here. Cherokee, a 68% foul shooter, averaging 11 points per game. Duke continues that unbelievable string where they. <laughs> They're now over 100 maids more than the other team shoots. But you know, we were talking before the game about one of those stats of Duke's team that really surprised me this year, as successful as they've been, is the fact that they only have one more assist than turnovers as a team. Very unusual for a club that's uh, of this caliber. And you figure your point guard has got better than two yeah, to one. Exactly. Bobby Early sitting there with 100, now 153 assists. This, the team in total only has 337. 33 30, Yellow Jackets. Under two to play in the first half from Cameron. Well, they're running their, off, their half court offense well. Really rubbing off their inside men. Georgia Tech has missed only six shots tonight in constructing this three point lead. And one of the reasons for that is the fact that I think they've been able to run their offense effectively. Duke has not forced them out of their offense at all. 
so they're getting exactly the shots they want. They've also have been very smart in under any of their transition opportunities, getting the ball to the open man. 16 fouls on Duke, so Georgia Tech plays it out of bounds. Tough shot. Parks has it ahead to Hurley. Collins staying wide for the three. There he is. Thomas Hill. And the travel. Four turnovers for the Devils. Well, Collins was wide open for the three-point play. Nobody could. Maybe that was the problem. Maybe he was too wide open on the sidelines. He's so far to that sideline there, the thought he was a press royal. You know, he's got that range, and that's what's great about a, a good range three-point shooter. He gets so far beyond the defense that it can't extend itself way out there. If it does, there should be a big hole in the center. Mackey controls, powers up, scores. Nice move by Malcolm Mackey. He's got four, Georgia Tech by five. See how far you have to go out to guard him, and it really takes the zone out too far to handle everybody. Early puts it in. That's a two-pointer. His first basket of the game. I think Georgia Tech should hold for the last basket here. They've had a real good first half. No sense giving Duke an opportunity to be ahead at halftime. First try to hang That's on to it is always tough. And Drew Barry picks up his first foul. You know, Bob, they've had the crowd out of the game. You know, they've had the lead consistently throughout the first half. Pull it back out. Use the 45 seconds. Take a chance to go in maybe uh, with a seven-point lead, but don't let Duke touch the ball again in this half. And Barry got a little bit eager. Duke has, of course, had a history of making things happen quickly towards the end of a half, end sure. of a game. Sure, you hear you have a situation. If Hurley hits these two, then they're in a, in a position to be able to press on the inbounds pass or at least have their defense established. Oh, he missed the That's front end of a one-and-one. One. But they get it back. Half a minute to go. And they go for one. Not going to give Georgia Tech an opportunity to get that last pass. Hurley just throws it up there. Oh, he's having a rough night. There's a... Foul on Newbill. As great as he's been throughout his career, this is one of his poorer halves. Bobby will come out in favor of Kenny Blakeney here. Of course, Bob with two personals. Yep, you watch this. Uh, you know, it's been a long time since you've seen Bobby Hurley try to make a play like that, particularly when they were holding for the last shot. Bob, one for five from the floor, three assists and two points. Meanwhile, Antonio Lang, the junior from Mobile, steps up. And he puts it in. A reminder, friends, the announcers for this game selected and compensated by Ray Kalm and Jefferson Pilot Sports, and the use of this broadcast without their express permission is prohibited. First point for Lang. And the rebound comes to Newbill. Georgia Tech has a two-point lead. And you see the time remaining here in the first half. Moore around the hill. Five seconds. Best will take it. Misses the three. It's out of bounds. Saved by Collins, and that's the hand. The first 20 minutes in the books. Georgia Tech trying to knock off Number three, Duke, for the second time this season, and they go to the locker room with a two-point lead. 35 to 33 is our halftime score. Stay with us. We'll talk more about it from Cameron Indoor Stadium in a moment. 35-33 at the half. Tonight's ACC action is brought to you by Pepsi, Gillette, Buick, Food Lion, by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. You're to Cameron Indoor Stadium, everybody. Bob Ranth, but Billy Packer. 35-33 at the half. Georgia Tech leading Duke by a deuce. And well, let's take a look at those ACC standings. Carolina winning at Maryland last night to take a half a game lead over Florida State. In the preseason, 
we felt it was going to be Carolina, Florida State, and Duke, but surprising, Wake Forest has been the team that's jumped into the upper echelon. Well, throughout the course of the year, Bob, Virginia had its nice run in that upper echelon and still holding in there nicely at five and four, as did Georgia Tech. So with the exception of NC State and, and Maryland, really, and Maryland's somewhat of a surprise down at that other end, uh, hoping that they could get, I'm sure they hope they could get in the middle of the pack this year, but extremely young club trying to balance with some veterans there has not been able to get it done. One other game in the league tonight with Wake Forest playing at Florida State. It's halftime at Cameron 35-33, Georgia Tech by two. And we will return after these messages from Georgia Tech and Duke University. Hi never satisfied with being second best in anything. I want Georgia Tech to be the premier technological university in the next century. And that means we have to have the premier student body. For more than 100 years, Georgia Tech has enjoyed a flow of talent through this institution that is unprecedented. No other university has ever had the opportunity that Georgia Tech has over the next five or six years. From the preservation of our forests to the conservation of the plants and animals that inhabit them, environmental issues have a long history at Duke University. For decades, Duke students and researchers have worked in an outstanding academic climate to answer some of the world's most urgent problems, like the destruction of tropical plants used for medicine or adapting to the damage caused by ozone and acid rain, finding answers for the future. Duke University. This message presented by the Atlantic Coast Conference. Georgia Tech 35 and Duke 33. Stay tuned for the Nations Bank Players of the Game Award. Nations Bank will contribute $1,000 to the Atlantic Coast Conference to be distributed among the member institutions under a conference-approved plan. That's the Nations Bank Players of the Game to be awarded near the end of our broadcast. Coming up next week, more ACC action, and we draw your attention to these games because there have been some time changes. Clemson and North Carolina. Billy and I will be over at the Dean Dome for the Tar Heels and the Tigers. That's a 7 p.m. game on Wednesday. And then Thursday night, also at 7 p.m., this is a time change, too. The Duke Blue Devils will look for a bit of revenge as they take out the Cavaliers of UVA up in Charlottesville. Both of those games at 7 p.m. This week's Nationwide Scholar Athlete is Barton Moffitt from the University of North Carolina. Barton is a senior philosophy major with a 3.6 grade point average and a recent inductee into Phi Beta Camp at UNC. Barton helped lead the Tar Heel lacrosse team to their fifth consecutive ACC championship in 1992. Congratulations to Barton Moffitt. At the break at Cameron Indoor Stadium with Georgia Tech holding a two-point lead over Duke. And we'll be back after this word from our good friends at Budweiser. Budweiser's scoreboard and one other ACC matchup tonight that gets underway at the hour. Wake Forest and Florida State, Arkansas. Trying to knock off Kentucky tonight, first half. They've reached the break in Baton Rouge with LSU leading by three. Also tonight, just underway at Vandy, South Carolina leads Tennessee. In the first half, Michigan up three over Wisconsin in Ann Arbor. Michigan rated number four this week. Miami leading Boston College by a point down in Florida tonight. Surprising Marquette against Cincinnati. That's all even in the first half of play at Cincinnati. Atlantic Coast Conference basketball on the Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports Network will continue after these messages from your local ACC station. Thirty-five, thirty-three here at halftime. Georgia Tech leading Duke by two. Welcome back to Cameron Indoor Stadium, everybody. Bob Rathman, Billy Packer here with you tonight. And Bill, a first half where Georgia Tech just shot lights out. They've only got a two-point lead to show for it. I really think the key for the first half was Bobby Hurley or the lack of Bobby Hurley. He sets the pace for the, the Duke team normally, both offensively and defensively. And what happened is that instead of taking away Georgia Tech's half-court offense, Duke was rather lethargic. They ran their offense, got good shots, and obviously have hit very well. Speaking of the stats, let's take a look at our U.S. Air halftime statistics tonight. You see Georgia Tech shooting 67 percent, Duke at 43 percent, rebounding going in Georgia Tech's favor. Turnovers, Georgia Tech has had 11 in the first half. Duke has been able to turn it into 13 points, Bill, but they really haven't had that big transition game. They really haven't, as, and as you can see, they've only turned the ball over four times primarily because they have not attacked what amounts to a passive matchup zone that Georgia Tech's playing. You know, sometimes you play against a zone team, you have a tendency just to want to stand around as they're standing. I think you really have to penetrate through the seams, get something working, even if you do turn the ball over a time or two. Travis Best of Georgia Tech 
coming off a big week last week against both Clemson and Maryland in the first half today nine points one three point well he's not only got good stats in this game he's playing a very good mental game keeping his team together hitting the open man not forcing anything offensively realizing that even against a Bobby Hurley he cannot go ahead and try to do too much because Hurley is such a good defender and here's something we're going to see this took place early in the game Georgia Tech because Duke has everybody back is really taking advantage there was the good pass by best and a good hold up shot by Barry Thomas Hill had nine points in that first half to pick up some of the slack that Hurley left to without scoring at four of seven from the field. Well he's found some openings against the zone with the jump shot but he also penetrated a couple of times on missed shots and was able to make some putbacks. There's an excellent short range jumper. Thomas Hill and Duke trailing by two here against Georgia Tech. 35 33 at the break and will return after this from Pepsi. Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of ACC basketball is brought to you by Pizza Hut, Central Fidelity Bank, Lincoln Mercury, AT&T, and by Nationwide Insurance. From the Raptors at Cameron, 35-33, the Jackets lead Duke by three. Billy, here's a Georgia Tech club. They've got 12 victories. They, this is their remaining schedule. Five of their last eight are against top 20 teams. Well, Georgia Tech has played a very tough schedule throughout the course of this year, so I would say that, you know, if they can break even here the rest of the way, they should find themselves certainly in a position for the NCAA tournament. But you just don't want to get in an NCAA tournament. You want to be on a roll towards the end so you can get moving on a positive basis. They have proven they can play against the best in the country. As an example, a Kentucky loss was, was a very positive loss at Kentucky. So this is a very good team, showing it here tonight. Uh, but they do have, as you say, a tough road to hoe here with the games remaining. And the Duke remaining schedule starts to thin out a little bit. One big nine conference game against UCLA here later in the month of February. And, of course, the wind-up game at North Carolina. The difference, of course, in that UCLA game as opposed to last year when they had to go on the road right. go all the way across country. They get the Bruins here on their home court, a Bruin team that's really struggling right now. West Coast basketball having its problems, and, of course, the Lou Campanelli case that came up this week uh, didn't help matters any. Absolutely shocking dismissal of the Cal coach. Luke Campanelli. Well, I think all of us that have followed his career, you know, you wondered when, when the announcement was made that maybe there was something non-basketball related. But when you find out the exact facts of the case, you wonder why an administration wouldn't be more supportive of their coach. You see Bobby Kremens, when his ball club has been ahead at halftime, they've gone on to win eight times without defeat. When Duke has been trailing at halftime this year, they're 0-3. Let's see if past trends mean anything. Duke's got the ball and trailing by two. So much for that lead. Right off the drawing board and onto the floor. Well, there was a case for Cherokee Parks, who, as I said in the first half, making himself available against the zone. The real key in the second half is Bobby Early getting on track, getting much more active with the ball and starting to drive against the zone. Drew Barry wheels around and has it taken away by Hurley. Bobby leaves it for Thomas Hill. Nice fake. right there a smart play realizing he had a good shot blocker on him in Mackey and here you see Barry goes inside probably had the layup don't you think yep Hurley does a nice job gets a good break going three on two hits the open man well, I thought it was Mackey it was Forrest that was on him but he just did a real nice job pump faking and getting the basket third on James Duke enjoying its first lead since it was 22 to 20 Thomas Hill trying to finish off Old-fashioned three-point play, and he's got it. Gets in 12 on the night. Was the leading scorer in their last game against Notre Dame with 17. Relatively low-scoring game. Now Barry hurt himself on that last drive. That's why he's on the bench. He'll end to take his place. 38-35, Duke. Marcy's oh, <laughs> You know, it almost seemed like he planned that one. I mean, it was such a line drive shot. And it, it throws it away. 
And Moore at the other end gets it right back, leaves it from Mackey. No, I don't think in. so. I don't think that was a walk. I don't know if he had control of the ball. Yeah, let's see. Let's see it. No, I, I think that was a good play. Yep. I think that was a good play. Unusual looking play, but I don't think it was a walk. Here's that 2 3 zone again. Match it up. And Mackey and Grant Ooh. Hill crashing into Mackey draws the foul. I don't agree with that one either. Mackey came underneath him. Mike Krzyzewski can't believe it either. I don't believe, I don't believe that call. There you see Mackey ran right into it and created the contact. Hill was moving to the basket. Second foul on Grant. 38-37 do. And look at the intricate cutting around the, the stationary solid screens on the inside, really freeing up good shots for Georgia Tech. Forrest still in there with three misses. Duke is running. Nice passing. Lang and Thomas play catch, and Antonio's there to finish it off. As the ball was rotated across the court, it really created a problem for the defense. Good passing by Duke. Three point Duke lead. Luke Perry, who has meant so much to Georgia Tech, not only in the first one against Duke, but also in recent games on the Georgia Tech bench. He is now back to the scorer's table to check in. Amazing how Duke has picked up the de defensive intensity here in the last couple of minutes and has forced Georgia Tech out of what had been a very patient half court offense. Here's Drew back at the ballgame. Hill goes out. See how patient Travis Best will be. Now, he has to realize that his team has been taken out of their offense a little bit. He may try to go one-on-one -on -one some. Hell ball, the possession arrow will give the ball to Georgia Tech, but absolute vice grip double team that time by Thomas Hill. Duke on the year holding teams to 41 percent. Here comes Best. Duke has really turned it up a notch. Yep, they really have. Hill to Hurley. And a block on Best. But if you're Bobby Crimmins, you say, boy, I don't want Bobby Hurley to get untracked here. You don't want him with that ball in his hands, dribbling the ball up the court, penetrating. It's kind of been like a sleeping dog. Let him just lay there, you know? I watched the Westminster Kennel Show this week. That's what you want him to do, just kind of sleep. <laughs> Three-pointer for Thomas Hill. And an amazing a six-point lead. And Georgia Tech has got to get some offense rolling here. Duke taking him right out of the game early in the second half. Mackey, strong to the bucket, had it blocked by Lang. Best leaves it short. Travis again up around Parks and scores. Thomas Hill from Hurley. And Martise Moore with the personal. That last shot by Best is the kind of shot a guy who made 81 in high school can put up against a 7, a 6'10 player, you know? A guy that can score like that and figure out a way to get it in the basket. Here's that last flurry. Good job by Lang on the block. There's Travis, gets inside, misses the easy one. Now watch him get this shot off. Just created the shot. Travis will have a chance to play a game back at Springfield next season, the Hall of Fame game against the Michigan Wolverines, a homecoming for the Massachusetts sophomore. Young man who was obviously a multiple-time player of the year in the state of Massachusetts, as was his father. Mm -hmm. The friendly roll gives Thomas Hill 16 points tonight. Matter of fact, somebody was kidding me about having met his father recently and said, I don't know how he could have been player of the game. He's kind of a fat little guy. I said, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, everybody gets a little bit fat as they get a little older. You know, I mean, it, it was really kind of a slap on the uh, generation that moves on. <laughs> Down the sill with 17. Duke, 45-36. The clock moving. 17 minutes to go. 45-39. Duke leading. And this run has gotten the crowd back into the game. 
much uh, different than in the first half where they kind of put him to sleep. Barrett had his three blocked by Grant Hill, and Grant comes out of oh, the what hands. Feeds Hurley to the trailing line. But Crimmins got to think timeout. He's Slow this crowd it. down. He's going to take it, yep. too. There he is. He's going to take it. He can't wait for the TV timeout. This game's getting away from him. 16-23, they're going nuts at Cameron. Duke 47, Georgia Tech 39. We'll be back after a word from our good friends at Budweiser. The Pizza Hut delivery of the game, and boy, just a tremendous effort here for Grant Hill. He'll block the shot. Well, first he double team, blocked the shot, then makes a multiple steal here. Takes it, recognizes the pass. Bobby Hurley lays it back. Antonio Lang delivers it with plenty extra cheese, huh? <laughs> and build a transition basket, something Duke really wasn't generating in the first half. Exactly. They weren't doing anything defensively to, to create that type of tempo that they've come out with in the second half. Basically, have done it all with the defense. Moving those feet, taking Georgia Tech out of that half-court defense, half-court offense. Georgia There's Tech. another one. Shot 67% in the first half. Grant Hill had it knocked out of his hands, but Martise Moore fouled it. Moore did a good job just getting back to the foul because Grant Hill had a good opportunity to put that one away in a dunk. Great anticipation by Hill. Always plays within himself. A cerebral player with incredible talent, you know? And really starting to use and bring all that talent to the fore. He had been a little reluctant to to take over a ball game, but no more. Grant Hill. Well, you know, the, the Georgia Tech game, which we mentioned uh, played previously in Atlanta this year, was really the first time, and it, of course, is his all-time high as a scorer, but the first time I've really seen him kind of take over a game, say, guys, you know, get on my back, as Christian Leitner used to do for this club, mm -hmm. and as Hurley has done on multiple occasions. Grant with five. Picked up 1-2-1-1 one, 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 full court pressure. Duke's biggest lead, 10, best right down the middle, and Forrest couldn't get it. The best thought he was fouled, but in any case, good defense by Duke getting back. The pass uh, too low for Mackey, who was on the run. Now you've got a team that's played a, a basic zone the entire game. This plays right into Duke's hands now, now that Duke has the lead. I wonder when Georgia Tech's going to come out and try to play a little man-to-man. Grant Hill softly to the bucket. I think they've got to change their defense now because Duke has adjusted to it. They're penetrating against the 2 3 matchup. They've got to do something else as this game starts to get away from them down 12. Perry for three. Couldn't get it. Parks done. Nice block out. Duke's running. They got the numbers. Early. Leaves it for Hill. Excellent no call by the official. Best trying to draw the charge. 53-39. Thomas Hill with a big night cooking. 19. Almost There's another. He almost got it again. Moore bangs it in. Artis with eight. Well, Moore, 42. Moore is going to be a big time scorer in this league with that kind of a jump shot. That bucket ends a 10-0 Duke run. Who doubles up 11. Let's see what happens here. You, you get up by 11. They're going to stay in that zone. Duke's just going to go ahead and move some clock, get good shots. Puts Georgia Tech in real trouble on a comeback attempt. Georgia Tech's able to clear it. Oh, what a move. Pass fades back. Missed it. Tipped into the hands of Mackey. Has scored 11, only one three-pointer in the ball game. Boy, Grant Hill's looking to pick off every pass that's thrown towards this man. Forrest. Putting on D. Tony Lang jumped right out on the switch. See Duke using a lot of clock here. They're saying we're not going to play against that zone. And if Georgia Tech's going to make a comeback, they've got to get out of it. And neither team plays a deep bench. And Bobby Cremins 
But the way Duke shoots free throws and with a guy like Curley at the point, if you want to win this game, I think Georgia Tech's going to be the one that's going to have to change defense before Duke changes their theory of playing offense. In and out. Oh, Hurley. That's a tough luck that time. Barry for three. Georgia Tech has needed a couple of big shots from the outside. They had one for more a minute ago, but that would have helped. 13 minute mark, second half. See, this, uh, Bob, uh, Mike Krzyzewski and I were talking about this phase of the game in college basketball now. Good teams, I think, are going to play. Uh, you know, we used to see the four corners. Now we're going to see a, a semi delay for 35 seconds of the first 45 seconds. Then with set plays coming off that last 10. Those teams that can execute that well, as the NBA teams do, are going to be the teams that are going to win down the stretch this year in the NCAA tournament, in my opinion. They go to the foul line a lot, take time off the clock, and make it impossible for that other club to make a great run for a comeback. The Wake Forest Florida State game is underway. 14 minutes left in the first half at Tallahassee. 24 16 Seminoles. Well, a lot of points could be scored in that game tonight. If they've got, if it's 24 16 with eight minutes <laughs> gone in the first half, good grief. Well, you talk about a, a guy who's having a heck of a year in regard to the adjustments. The Wake Forest this year has gone from a team that both of us saw earlier in the year. The Dave Odom had a club that was struggling. They were playing basically a lot of aggressive man-to-man. -man. Rodney Rogers down in the low post. All of a sudden, a lot of multiple substitutions. Dave Odom changed that philosophy, going a lot more zone, opening things up with Childress, moving uh, Rogers to the outside some, and all of a sudden, uh, those adjustments have made this a, a, a very imposing team. And we're seeing now what we saw a couple of years ago with Randolph Childress. He can stick that three-pointer with the best of them. Well, you think about their club last year. You know, all they missed was a Randolph Childress, a guy that was willing to play the perimeter game, make the big shot. That would have been a very dangerous team. 54-42 Duke. sitting down. Mike Krzyzewski saying, I'm going for the win here. He's going to get Grand Hill rested for that drive down that last eight minutes. Forrest. And we've got an offensive foul on James Forrest as he threw the forearm on his way to the basket. And that is his fourth foul. Well, solid D by Lang. Forrest using that great upper body strength. And you see that he went, went out and Lang went for the left-handed block. And Forrest did move him out of the way with his own left hand. So James comes out. Mackey right back in for Georgia Tech. 12, 11 left in the second hand. Chris Collins in the game, so what are you going to expect to see? Sit on the ball for a while, look for him down the corner with a jumper. Oh, he didn't take it. Clark on the cut. That's a travel. We have a timeout on the floor. 11 59 to play the game. It's Duke 54 and Georgia Tech 42. We'll be right back. Well, we talk about the stats in the first half where Georgia Tech was shooting 66%. Watch what happens in the second half. Duke picked it up defensively, got into some transition baskets. Bobby Hurley looking for an open man. Hits Thomas Hill. No, no call, rightfully so, on the uh, penetration by Hurley, but. What a difference a half makes, huh, Bob? <laughs> well, things have changed. 27% now for Georgia Tech, and Duke up to 70%. And a lot of that 70 coming off the defense. Missed shots, good transition. Excellent decision-making by Duke on the break, whether it be a two-on-two -two break or three-on-two, or in some cases, two-on-one. They really have uh, been able to finish off. Well, Georgia Tech regrouping now coming at the Blue Devils and showing the versatility of Grand Hill. He's now guarding Mackey. Remember early in that first half when Hurley was down, he was guarding Travis Best. And a foul on Eric Meek. Eric's first. Foul is called against. Give me your opinion. He got a starting assignment tonight instead of Cherokee Parks because. Uh, Obviously, was uh, something that Mike Shishesky had from a motivational standpoint. 
Would you expect Char uh, Parks to be back in that starting lineup? I would say so. Yeah, I think so. Not that he's had a great night, but he certainly, I'm sure, got the got the picture. <laughs> you give Georgia Tech some credit. They're staying with their offense. Down 12. Nobody's gotten carried away with one-on-one -on -one action yet. The Duke's just swarming. Mackey worked hard. Nice. And got the dunk. And that's where a team is listening to their coach. You know, don't try to get it all back on one play. Very well executed uh, possession at time for Georgia Tech. Grant Hill just inside the ring. Well, that's something you have to wonder about his play. There's another good transition opportunity. And Hill with the foul. Third on Grant. Drew Barry will shoot two. And the patience of Georgia Tech. You know, I thought that they'd be the ones to become impatient as they got down by more than double figures, but they've stayed with their game. Now they're making Duke change some things. Almost a sensational block at the end of the body. There's Mr. Parks back to the ball game, and Grant, as we mentioned, with three fouls. Drew Barry will go to the foul line. Drew Barry to the line on Georgia Tech. Well, Barry's been averaging nine assists a game over his last four games. Assist to turnover ratio of almost two to one, which is excellent to have two guys on your ball club like Best, who's 2.3 to 1 in assist turnover ratio, and then Barry coming in there. That's strong. 10 points for Drew. In fact, he got all the top three in the league in this game of early in assist turnover ratio in the ACC. Well, Bobby Crimmins had a lot of guts to stay with this passive zone instead of going out and chasing Duke, and so far it's paid off for him. Georgia Tech trailing by eight. I really thought he'd have to crack, you know? Hill. Oh, Grant Hill. Good grief. Barry wondering where did he come from? <laughs> Duke had gone four minutes without a field goal. Inside quickly to back a great feed by Barry. Well, excellent rotation the passing right there by Georgia Tech and what happened Cherokee Parks just couldn't fight over the top got caught at the angle Drew Perry has picked up six assists tonight Marty Clark rebounded by five. Perry and Georgia Tech's got a chance to knife into that lead a little more and a takeaway by Thomas Hill just as Barry didn't realize Grant Hill was behind him down on this end of the floor, I don't think that Best realized that Thomas Hill was standing right there. You know, he, made, he gave the ball up, an open look. Early, short. It's not his night. Drew Barry leading a three on two, but not good spacing. And that's going to travel on Hill. Well, Georgia Tech, Billy, has remained in this ball game trailing by eight despite 19 turnovers. You know, you look, at, you look at Bobby Hurley tonight, and it just seems like he's playing on some tired legs. You notice the elevation on that last jump shot? Almost like a guy suffering from the flu or, or something. He's just not, just not sharp, just not exploding. Nine minutes, five seconds left in the ballgame. Thomas Hill. Yes. Thomas Hill is showing fresh legs. You know, he's bouncing right off the floor with his jump shot. His third three-pointer, 22 tonight for T. Hill. Ryan Hill will take a three-pointer, and he hits it. Just his eighth three-pointer of the season in his first basket tonight. Keeps Georgia Tech within hailing distance. As I said, he's... Uh, Really done an excellent job off the bench in six games this year in double figures. Nice to have a guy that can explode. He's always given uh, Tech good defense. Early. Too long with the three this time. They try to overcompensate him. Yeah. Realize he didn't have the lift with the legs. Forced it up high. And there's Brian Hill again. Scoring and it's 59-53. 
You see now, Mike Krzyzewski before was going to, you know, hold the ball out, make Tech come play him a while. He decided to keep putting the ball inside, and now they're in some trouble. And Georgia Tech's got a breakaway. They'll call a timeout after this play. Malcolm Mackey stuffs it for his 10th point tonight. And there's the timeout from Coach Ken. 7.49 left. Not nearly as noisy here at Cameron right now. The Duke lead is down to four. We'll be back after this word from our good friends at Budweiser. Good ball rotation by Georgia Tech. Mackey just followed it around, and as I said before, Parks tried to chase him all the way across the lane, but the ball was reversed so well that he couldn't get to him. Here we see what, what started the timeout. Early just throws it up in the air. There was really nothing there. A good reverse by Hill. Out over to Mackey, and you can see Mike Krzyzewski already off the bench saying, guys, what in the world is going on here? They are now in a dogfight. And to give a lot of credit to Bobby Crimmins, he had confidence in that zone, stayed with it. I really thought the breaking point at about the 14-minute mark was such that he'd have to say, hey, we're going to, you know, it looks like we're going to be out of this thing, down 12, 14 points, and maybe come out of it. But he stayed with it, had patience. Georgia Tech has gone on a 7-0 spurt to cut it to four. Yellow Jackets led by two at halftime. Then Duke made that big run, tried to apply the knockout punch. Uh-oh. Mackey went down. I think he hurt his knee. He either slipped on the floor. It's a strange thing. He tried to come off the screen and just went right down. When you wonder if that knee did give way if he slipped. Take another look at it as Thomas Hill got open for the shot. I just saw him go down. I think he had knee on knee. Lang and, and uh, Mackey. Mackey going to try to run it off. Happens so often. It's like hitting your crazy bone, you know, mm. knee on knee. And good job on, on Mackey's part, though, to walk it off. He doesn't want to come out now. Stay tuned for the Players of the Game Award brought to you by Nations Bank. 7.25 remaining here at Cameron. 61.55 Duke. Uh -oh. All of a sudden, Duke picks it up a little bit defensively. You see the numbers from Tallahassee, Florida State by seven. You know, you think right now, get the ball to Thomas Hill. He's been their hot man tonight. Been the hot button the, the entire night, looking for his jump shot. Grant Hill ballet is one. Parks with a big offensive stick back. Timeout, Georgia Tech. Bobby Kremen saw his team close within four, but a Duke spurt has pushed it back to eight. And he's going to talk about it. 6.49 to play in the ball game. Duke 63, Tech 55. Pepsi game summary. Georgia Tech, despite the 19 miscues, trailing by eight. Drew Barry with double-figure points and six assists tonight. The uh, Blue Devils have scored 25 points off those 19 Georgia Tech turnovers. And as Billy has pointed out, a big night tonight for Thomas Hill. 24 points. That's one away from his season high, which he set in Maui against LSU when he scored 25. Bobby Crummins, this moments ago, in the huddle with his Yellow Jackets. And at the other end of the floor, Mike Krzyzewski talking to his Duke Blue Devils. Well, remember that turnover that Duke had that led to an easy basket by Georgia Tech. Krzyzewski immediately called the time, and his team picked it up defensively right after that. And since that time, they've been able to extend that lead back a little bit. A nice ebb and flow here. Both coaches recognizing, in the case of Bobby Crimmins, wanting to keep his team within striking distance. In the case of Mike Krzyzewski, wanting his team to pick up defensive intensity. Trying to give a little different look to that matchup zone. Again, I'm thinking Thomas Hill here. Parks finds Thomas Hill. Grant Hill, my goodness, he comes from the weak side again to jam home a missed shot. The second one tonight, right over everybody. You say, put a body on him. You say, coach, he was over my head. <laughs> Another key possession for the Yellow Jackets. They need points. 5.35 to go in the game. Mackey. Nice. Well, I really love Georgia Tech's patience tonight. Even though they're behind in this game, they have not gotten out of what the coach wanted them to do. Mackey 
Kentucky, the only player in the country, active player with 1,500 points and 1,000 rebounds, but you know you have so many of these superstars going early, so I guess that's the reason for it. That's a charge on Thomas Hill. It will be his third. Surprise, Duke is not starting to take more time off the clock. Force Georgia Tech to come chase him a little bit. You're talking about Malcolm Mackey, Bill. He leads the ACC in rebounding at 10.7. I think back to the days of Dickie Hamrick, who averaged 17 rebounds a game in his way. Forrest career in his senior year had 19 rebounds per game. If a somebody had it. A different sport. <laughs> Just a bit. There's a travel on him. Can you imagine if a college player came along today and averaged 19 rebounds a game, they'd bronze him and send him to well, Springfield. You know, it, it's kind of funny. When you think of those type of... Walter Duke says, of course, the NCAA record back in the early 50s for Seton Hall, but uh, then, it, then it changed the, the type of rebounding you have now and the techniques for rebounding, and also the lane got wider. Now you have the Dennis Rodman types in the, uh, right. in the NBA level that just crash the boards and, and get those same kind of stats uh, that they had with the old uh, big-time centers. Well, here's Duke pulling yep. it out, and Georgia Tech is now... See, down eight. Sooner or later, Bobby Crimmins will have to abandon the zone. I thought it was going to be a long time ago, but he had more patience than I did. And Malcolm Mackey picks up his third foul. James Forrest with four. That's the fourth on, for Tech, on Mackey. Now we understand. Four personals on Malcolm. And then you have Mackey with four, Forrest with four. Duke against uh, Clemson the other night, 27 of 32 on the line. So this is a team that can bury you with ease. It's a far cry, this Duke free throw shooting from that Oklahoma game when they missed 11 straight free throws. That just seems hard to believe. Yep. In their own gym. Yeah. Yeah. Antonio was seven. You know, the other thing, you know, I think about, we talked about Hurley from the get-go tonight. He's averaging right about 35 minutes a game. Duke has played in a very aggressive schedule, averaging almost three games a week up to this point in the season. Now they're going to slow down to two games a week, give him an opportunity to get his legs back. Georgia Tech's got three guys that are averaging right at 35 minutes a game with Best and Forrest and Mackey. So that has been a Bobby Crimmins trade. Yep. He's never gone very deep. Well, he follows the his mentor, Frank McGuire, system that you play five, six guys on a squad. And you can't argue with the results. Nope. Five-second violation. Second time tonight. Nobody coming to meet the ball. Georgia Tech has lost its last five games in this building. Now, see, you have a situation now. Four minutes to go. Well, Mackey upset with a five-second call, but one thing he could have done instead of burying himself down the low post is come out and meet it. Four now, minutes to go. Now, under four minutes to go, you got a ten-point lead. You start becoming a mathematician here. But if they don't come out to get you, and now Bobby Krim has decided it's time to do it. Because you can, you can, everybody can add, you know. You can take 45 seconds off each time. You're up by ten, you know, it's just about over. Probably pretty good at running off that clock and not allowing a guy to get a five-second count on him. A little penetration and pull back. Thomas Hill. Perfect. Beautiful night. 26 for Thomas, a season high. Matches his career high. And more importantly, they took off about 30 seconds on the clock. And Georgia Tech will use its final timeout. Duke beginning to pull away, leading Georgia Tech by 12 with 314 left. We'll return after this from the Atlantic Coast Conference. Believing in yourself is the basic underlying theme of, of winning anything. And from there, you start to pick up on hard work and determination. I swim long events, and there's a really direct relationship between the amount of work that you put into it and what you get out of it. It's probably in swimming one of the most direct relationships of any sport. When you put in the work, be it in the classroom, be it in the pool, you can't, you can't be denied what you deserve.
You know, when you're young and you have strong legs and lots of wind, you think you can play forever. Wow, was that you? But the game ends all too soon. And if you aren't ready for life's game, you could be facing a bleak future. Hey, do yourself a favor, kids. Stay in school, use your library, and read. Obviously, I don't play the game anymore, but due to my education, I talk a pretty good one. Along with the handsome Billy Packer, 69-57, Duke leading Georgia Tech with 314 to play. The This is Grant Hill. Watch this play. Well, obviously, nobody there to block him out, but look at how high up he was. I mean, actually, I think his eye was, was level with the rim. And uh, it just reached out there with that wingspan of his and put it right back in. Second great follow-up he's had tonight. Georgia Tech pulled within four at 59-55. Duke called the timeout with 7.49 left. They have gone on to outscore Georgia Tech 10-2 to to put this working margin on the board here. Nice hedge by Lang. But nobody picked up for him. Martise Moore hits double figures. 10-point Duke lead with three minutes to go. Here's the Georgia Tech man-to-man. -man. Travis Best kind of complained to the referee at that timeout, wondering why there was no five-second call when he was guarding Hurley. And the reason for it is Hurley penetrates just enough to take the five-second count off. Now watch. Here it starts. Now watch. Bobby will back him off. See, he backs him off, so he's no longer within six feet regular guarding position. Five second counts off. And you see Dick Paparo with his arms yep. outstretched, indicating there's no count. He's not close enough to start the count. Tough shot. Oh. And <laughs> Lang got lucky. He looks over at Grand Hill and said, there's an impersonation. 71-59. <laughs> now Georgia Tech has to start putting the shots up. they got to be thinking three here. Down 12. That's four possessions with three. And you know Duke's going to hang on to the ball some, so you got to take quicker shots. Barry loads up. Forrest. Nice block by Lang. He's having a solid game here. Yes, he is. Ten points. Oh, double figures now. Seven of his last 14. And it does no good at all for Best to be guarding Hurley close if Moore doesn't move up on Grand Hill. And when you press, all five guys got to be working just as hard. One man lets down. That's the open passing lane, so the press will break down. See? All five got to be right on their man. Take a chance. If a guy beats you one-on-one, -on -one, it's not going to make a difference anyway. Parks. And he'll get a piece of it. 60 seconds to play as Barry feeds Forrest. And he'll shoot a free throw. And that's what you don't want to do if you're Duke is to commit the foul. Stops the clock, puts a man on the line for additional points. You're better off just letting him have the uncontested unless you know you definitely are going to get it. Nice dish inside. See, Parks comes over there. There's no way he could have been absolutely sure he was going to stop a strong power inside player like Forrest on that shot. You see James' numbers from the first game. 12 tonight. Mackey kicks it out. They need threes. Best goes inside to Mackey. That should come right back out looking for the three. Cherokee Parks and Grant Hill. This one's going to be on Hill, his fourth. Now, here's why stats lie sometimes, Bob, in a game like this. If you're Georgia Tech, your strategy has kept the game close, but it didn't give you a chance to win. Now, if the object is to stay close and look good, that's one thing. But the, you know, you see sometimes when you, you go all out to try to win, you got to take some threes, you got to take some gambles, try to steal the ball, but you also then can get blown out of what had been a relatively close game. Kept alive, but finally secured by Grant Hill. I think that was pretty much the case here last week with the Carolina game. That was a one-two possession game. It yeah. ended up a 14-point spread. Seventy-one, sixty-one, Duke. 
And also, I think that it makes no sense just to go out and foul. In this case, put Duke on the line because you're not going to win the game. So Georgia Tech, after knocking off Duke in Atlanta by one, on the short end tonight, Duke wins its sixth in a row. They'll go to 19 and three and seven and three in the ACC. Georgia Tech now 12 and seven and five and five in the ACC. Well, you think so much, uh, Bob, of what could have been. You know, you, like the Wake Forest losing to Florida State in the tight game, Virginia uh, beating Florida State in the tight game up there. You know, you, you look around the country, Indiana, look at how many tight games they've won in their league, including, of course, last night's uh, outstanding game with Penn State. 73-61, Travis Best rolls it in. His 13th point, and that'll do it. A 10-point victory for the Blue Devils tonight. The final score at Cameron Indoor Stadium, the Duke Blue Devils 73 and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets 63. As Duke now leads the all-time series here 17 to 3, and they've beaten Georgia Tech the last six times they've met here in Durham. Big night for Thomas Hill, and always for that man, it seems, Grant Hill. We'll talk more about it in a moment. 73-63, Duke wins. We'll be back. Tonight's ACC action has been brought to you by Nations Bank, U.S. Air, Pepsi, Budweiser, and by Nationwide Insurance. This is a hard-fought game. Yeah, it was a, an unbelievably tough game. I thought our defense in the second half was terrific. Uh, Tony Lang and Cherokee Parks really played their big men a lot better, and we made good decisions. Uh, we found out where Thomas Hill was on the court and got him the ball, and uh, Thomas hit many big buckets today. At the end of the clock, I thought we, we got worn down a little bit. That's why we tried to give our kids a little bit of a rest. And then at the end of the clock, Thomas came up with some uh, some great buckets, and we got some big offensive rebounds. It was a hard-earned win over a very talented Georgia Tech team. Uh, Mike, one of the things you mentioned, Thomas having such a good game, it looked like he had fresh legs, but on the other hand, it looked like Bobby Hurley, for one of the few times in his career, looked like his legs were just worn out. It was one of those nights it wasn't the real Bobby Hurley we normally see. What was the case? Well, Bobby's main job today, Billy, was to uh, make sure Travis Best didn't have an all-world all game like he's had. And so he was not only playing defense on the ball, he was following Best everywhere. And I think by the time he's coming down the court, uh, you know, he wasn't as fresh. And But Thomas was in a position to, you know, to do that. So uh, uh, Bobby did a good job, a really good job on best. And that was one of our things in the game plan. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Let's take a look at the ACC standings. And you'll see the Tar Heels with that half a game uh, lead over Florida State. Duke now moving up to seven wins in ten league games. And they've got the Wake Forest Demon Deacons coming in here on Saturday. The man of the hour here, of course, is Thomas Hill, who matches career high with 26 tonight. T, congratulations. Thanks a lot. Well, that was a nice effort. You had it going all night long tonight. Yeah, uh, found, I finally found the range. Well, Thomas, one of the things that you saw tonight was a was a matchup zone that uh, you not only talk about finding the range, I thought that you fellas were able to realize that you guys, that you personally, had a hot hand tonight. You look like, as I mentioned, had fresh legs and, and got the shot. Could you feel early on against that zone that you were going to be the guy in the position to get some open shots? Yeah, well, you know, we, we knew what their zone was, was going to allow the offense to give. And, uh, you know, it was just a matter of stepping up with some confidence and, and hitting the shots. And, you know, I, I was doing it today. One of the other things I noticed tonight that uh, in a total game, it was not just points that you had. You were doing an excellent job preventing your man from ever touching the ball on the defense, particularly the start of that second half. Did Coach uh, K say anything at halftime about stepping up that defense to, to come out the second half? Yeah, well, you know, in the first half, you know, we knew as a team we weren't contesting and, uh, you know, we just weren't getting our hands on the ball on defense. And, you know, in the second half, we, we, we did that. Uh, we denied Drew Barry the ball, Bron Hill. And, you know, we did a good job on those guys. And I think that was the, the difference in our defense. 
Well, Thomas, congratulations. Get the Deke Saturday. We'll see you then. All right, thanks. Okay, Thomas Hill, the Duke Blue Devils, with 26 tonight to help spearhead this Blue Devil attack to a 73-63 win over Georgia Tech. Back with some final comments in a moment. Yep. Final score tonight. More ACC action coming up this weekend. And we begin with our first game at 1.30, the Florida State Seminoles against the Maryland Terrapins from Cole Fieldhouse. And then check your local listings for the game in your area at 4. It'll either be the Wake Forest Demon Deacons here to meet the Blue Devils or the other 4 o'clock game Saturday, Virginia and Clemson from South Carolina. We will be back with more in just a moment after this word from our good friends at Budweiser. Outstanding play of Thomas Hill tonight. He scores a career-high 26. Duke knocks off Georgia Tech 73-63. The Devils are 7-3 in the ACC. So for Billy Packer, this is Bob Rathman saying so long from Cameron Indoor Stadium. You've been watching exclusive coverage of ACC basketball on the Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports Network. Hello, everybody. Tom Suter, 530 Sports Headlines. Duke taking on Georgia Tech last night with the Blue Devils avenging one of its three defeats this season, beating the Jackets 73-63. The win puts the Devils at 19-3 overall, 7-3 in the ACC. And hopefully we just continue to play more and realize that, you know, hey, we, we play defense, we think about defense going into a game. Uh, you know, beating Georgia Tech. Now, Duke's been playing uh, playing its third game in five days. Sluggish at the beginning, but came on strong in the second half. Devils happy to win, but say, hey, we got to start better. We need to start playing a little more efficient in the first half of ball games and, and, and start getting leads on teams early. Um, we, we've done a great job in the second half of a lot of games and um, taking it at teams and building leads, but we need to start doing that in the first half. Okay, Blue Devils hosting Wake Forest on Saturday. It's a key matchup for both.